Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we will be deriving an expression for the refractive index of the ionosphere. So how do we derive the expression for the refractive index of the ionosphere? Well, let's find out. So in the case of skywave propagation or ionospheric propagation, we saw that when a particular transmitter antenna sends a particular signal onto the layer of the atmosphere called the ionosphere, what happens is that it reaches the ionosphere and gets reflected back and it then reaches the receiver. So this is what we refer to as sky wave propagation or ionospheric propagation. Well, I have done a detailed video on sky wave propagation or ionospheric propagation. If you haven't watched that video, please watch it first before watching this video. I will leave the link to the video in the description below. So in the formation of the ionosphere, we saw that a lot of atoms gets converted into ions and subsequently electrons would also be ejected and therefore inside this ionosphere there would be a large number of ions and electrons. So therefore there will be a large number of ions and electrons here in the ionosphere. So here let us assume that X is an atom which was present initially present in the ionosphere and in the formation of ionosphere we saw that when the cosmic ray falls on this X atom it would eject an electron thereby creating an ion. So therefore this would thus become X plus plus an electron. So therefore here when you notice here you notice the fact that the mass of this ion is greater than the mass of this electron. That is the mass of the ion is very much greater than the mass of the electron. So therefore since the electron has got very small mass and since because the mass of the ion is very big, these ions will move very slowly within this ionosphere. But because the mass of the electron is very very small, it would have very high velocity that is it would move very quickly within this particular ionosphere and therefore when this particular electromagnetic radio wave falls on this ionosphere, we can say that the reflection of this electromagnetic radio wave is mainly because of the collision of this electromagnetic radio wave with the electrons inside this ionosphere. That is because these electrons are moving rapidly inside this ionosphere with a very high velocity when compared to the ions, the probability that these electromagnetic radio signals will collide with these electrons is very high. Therefore, this reflection is caused because these electromagnetic radio waves strikes those particular electrons and gets reflected back. So now, that is the basic idea of what's happening here in the entire scenario. Now, let's see how we can derive the equation for the refractive index. So, in order to find the refractive index, first let us take the electric field of the signal that is sent by the transmitter. So, the electric field of this transmitted signal is the same as that of the electric field of any alternative electric field that is given as em sin omega t. So therefore let us assume the electric field of the transmitted electromagnetic radio wave as E is equal to em sin omega t. So this is the electric field of the transmitted electromagnetic radio wave. So here either an inductive current or a capacitive current would be developed in this electric field. So therefore the total current that would be developed here is the total sum of the inductive current and the capacitive current. So for that we have to find each of these current elements individually. So first let us find the inductive current. So the inductive current is given by the formula II is equal to NEV where E is the charge of a particular electron. So let us take the charge of the particular electron as Q. So this can be written as NQV. Okay. So when a particular charge is kept inside an electric field we have seen that the force on that charge is given as F is equal to QE. So let us write it there. Here F is equal to QE. But we also know that F is equal to MA which is the mass into the acceleration. So F is equal to MA. But we know that A is equal to dV by dt. That is acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So therefore putting that over here we get M into dV by dt is equal to QE. So here we have found the value of E as Em sin omega t. So therefore let us substitute this value over here. So this becomes Em sin omega t. So now therefore rearranging this we get Q into Em by M sin omega t dt. So now let us take the integral at both sides. So let us integrate this side as well as this side. So by integrating it we can get the velocity over here. Okay. So now the velocity V is given as V is equal to Q into Em by M. 
this is a constant and integral of sin omega t dt is given as minus cos omega t divided by omega so therefore the entire expression for the velocity becomes equal to minus q em by m omega cos omega t so i am writing this over here so now let us substitute the value of this velocity in this equation that is i i is equal to n q v substituting this in this we get the value of the inductive current as i i is equal to minus n q squared e m by m omega cos omega t so that is the inductive current that is developed here now the capacitive current is given by the formula i c is equal to dou d by dou t where d is given as epsilon 0 e so therefore substituting this epsilon 0 e over here we get the value of i c as dou epsilon 0 e by dou t so e we know the value of e as e is equal to e m sin omega t so therefore putting this e m sin omega t over here we get the value of i c is equal to epsilon 0 into dou of e m sin omega t divided by d t so here e m is a constant so therefore taking e m outside we get epsilon 0 e m into dou of sin omega t by dou t so that is we have to differentiate sin omega t with respect to t therefore the differential of sin omega t with respect to t is omega cos omega t so therefore this becomes equal to epsilon 0 e m into omega cos omega t so therefore this is the capacitive current that we obtain so let me write this over here now the total current is given as the sum of the inductive current plus the capacitive current that is total current i is equal to ic plus ii but we have found ii as this particular expression and ic as this particular expression so substituting these two values in this we get the total current i as i is equal to epsilon 0 em omega cos omega t which is the capacitive current minus nq squared em by m omega cos omega t because minus nq squared em by m omega into cos omega t is the inductive current that we obtained so here let me take em omega cos omega t as common outside so this becomes i is equal to em omega cos omega t into epsilon 0 minus n q squared by m omega squared because here in the numerator there is no omega term so because i took omega as common outside i multiplied it to the denominator making it omega squared over here so therefore from this we get the value of epsilon as epsilon is equal to this particular expression that is epsilon 0 minus n q squared divided by m omega squared but we know that the refractive index mu is given as root of epsilon r where epsilon r is epsilon by epsilon 0 so here let us take epsilon by epsilon 0 let us divide both the sides by epsilon 0 so dividing it by epsilon 0 we get 1 minus n q squared divided by m omega squared epsilon 0 therefore the value of refractive index is given as mu is equal to root of epsilon by epsilon 0 therefore which is equal to root of 1 minus n q squared divided by m omega squared epsilon 0 so here we know the value of q as a charge of an electron which is given as 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb and the mass of an electron as 9.1 into 10 raised to minus 31 kilograms and epsilon 0 as 8.85 into 10 raised to minus 12 and omega as 2 pi into frequency so therefore putting all those values over here we get the value of the refractive index as mu is equal to root of 1 minus 81 n divided by f square this thus is the value of the refractive index of the ionosphere as simple as that so guys this thus is how you derive the expression for the refractive index of the ionosphere i hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you guys can derive the expression for the refractive index of the ionosphere and we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos so stay tuned stay subscribed and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you